In imperial year 1181, the new Adrestian emperor, Edelgard von Hersfeld, led a strategic assault against the monastery at Garig Mach. Though her own losses were great, her foes had no choice but to surrender. Archbishop Rhea commanded the Knights of Saros, leading from the front lines against the Imperial army. After a hard-fought battle, she was forced to retreat to Ferdiad, the capital of Fargus, where she must now plan her next move. With this single attack, the Adrestian Empire officially launched its offensive against the Holy Kingdom of Fargus and the Leicester Alliance. The unification of Fodlin has begun. Part 2. Crimson Flower. Ethereal Moon. Beyond Escape. It is Imperial Year 1185. Half a decade has passed since Emperor Edelgard ascended the Imperial throne, yet the continent of Fodlin still remains lost in a tempest of turmoil and bloodshed. In the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, King Dimitri has welcomed Archbishop Rhea and her knights, who were driven out of Garrick Mach to the Kingdom capital. As they work to build a unified front, the war with the Empire rages on to the west. Meanwhile, Claude, leader of the Alliance, staves off Imperial intervention by strategically stirring up conflicts between Leicester lords in an effort to feign neutrality. As events unfold, Edelgard and her Black Eagle strike force begin to take action in an attempt to break the war's current state of deadlock. You. How long do you intend to sleep? Your body is awake. Your eyes must open now, and you must find the strength to stand upon those legs of yours. Like so much rain, a pool of blood has fallen to the ground. As spears and arrows pierce the earth, it weeps. And even now, it weeps. In order to survive, they kill. And so the people of this world are lost in an abyss of suffering. They weep as well. The only one who truly knows the nature of such things is I. Or rather, you. I'm still sleepy. Who? Oh, you are a complete and utter fool! Have you not changed one bit? Get on your feet. Right now, I'll coddle you no more. You are just like a child, always needing me to hold your hand. Hey, are, are you awake? Who are you? I'm just a villager here. What are you doing in a place like this? I honestly didn't expect to find someone floating away down the river. Garrick Mach is upstream of here, but that place was abandoned. What do you mean? Huh? You don't know? The Church of Saros isn't there anymore. Though, there have been some folks still living there in the five years since... Well, you know. Regardless, the Imperial Army has taken over now. What year is it? Um, are you feeling alright? You didn't hit your head or anything, did you? It's the ethereal moon of the year 1185. It's been nearly five years since the monastery fell. Tomorrow was supposed to be the Millennium Festival, but who's got time to think about things like that? The Millennium Festival? Uh, yeah, that's what I said. But with the war and the Archbishop still missing at all, I doubt there's a soul to be found who has enough blessings worth counting. Hey, slow down, will ya? Where do you think you're going? The monastery. Are you crazy? The Imperial Army is there. Come on, I, I promise I won't say you're a coward. Just forget about going anywhere near the monastery. You just remember I tried to stop you, got it? It's not on my conscience if you wind up dead. My students are waiting for me. Students? You really are crazy, aren't you? 
There aren't any kids anywhere near that place anymore. Unbelievable. Five years ago to the day. If things had continued on as they were, today would have been the Millennium Festival. Halt! Who's there? It can't be. Professor? Is it really you? But I searched everywhere and never found a trace. My teacher. What have you been doing all this time? Where have you been? I was sleeping. Joking? At a time like this? You do realize it's been five years since you disappeared. Do you have any idea how guilty I felt? How broken my heart was? I searched high and low after you vanished. Although there was no proof, I somehow knew you were alive. All this time, I led everyone as best I could and fought with all my heart. It's been a difficult path to walk alone. Ugh. Welcome back, my teacher. I'm so happy that you're safe. Five years. Such a short time, but it feels like an eternity ago. Do you... still feel the way you did all those years ago? You said then that you would fight at my side no matter how many enemies we should amass. As for me, my resolve has not faltered. I'm determined as ever to see this through to the end. I will defeat the False Goddess. I will save this world from those creatures and give humanity its freedom back. So, my teacher, are you prepared to stand with me? I... I thank you. Truly. Now then, I assume you understand the situation at hand, yes? I really was asleep all this time. Another joke? Or... Are you telling the truth? I suppose you must be. In that case, I'll tell you all that has transpired as you slumbered these past five years. And that is where we are now. The war is at a stalemate. Dimitri is the new king of Fargus. It's clear that his territory will continue to support the church. Meanwhile, Claude's leadership has thrown the Alliance into chaos. He maintains neutrality in their internal conflict. The situation has created a deadlock. We've been awaiting an opportunity for our squadron to return to the monastery. With you in the fray, I believe the state of the war will shift immediately. The Church, as well as the Kingdom and the Alliance. The time has come to eliminate them all. The Church of Saros. Rhea, Sedeth, the Knights and the others are in prime condition. They've set up their base within the Kingdom capital. The Immaculate One and her family have yet to fight on the front lines. However, we must eventually face and defeat them. It would mean a great deal to have you with us when the time comes. Good. Well then, I believe it's time for a little reunion. The Black Eagle Strike Force never lost faith. They knew you were alive and have been awaiting your return. Let's not keep them waiting any longer. Each unit has grown over the past five years. You should check their classes and weapons. Yuritsa will now work together with you. Well now, that face is certainly familiar. I am glad to see you alive and well, Professor. Professor, it's me, Bernie. Do you remember me? I can't believe you're here. I can't believe it. Is this a dream? Can we really be this lucky? This is not dreaming. Our professor is with us again. Welcome to the back. I mean, welcome back. Our group isn't the same without you. I am overjoyed to see you again. It's been so long. Seeing you again fills my heart with hope. Great. Now everything will be easy. Um, that's great you're safe, Professor. I'm deeply, deeply moved. Quite the reunion, isn't it, Professor? Everyone's happy to see you. Come on, Edelgard. You must be happier than all of us combined. She took it really hard when you disappeared, Professor. 
Of course, we did our very best in your absence. And there was never a day that we doubted you would return to us. Edelgard has been leading us as Emperor. But after you disappeared, it became apparent that you were her anchor. It gives me regret to be admitting this, but... Our power is not enough. The only one who can be meeting Edelgard's expectations is you, Professor. Most impressive of all is your uncanny ability to bring a smile to everyone's face. In the years since you vanished, we have not lost anyone from our ranks. We all longed for your presence and your leadership. Myself included. It seems fitting to view this as a new beginning for the Black Eagle Strike Force. We already have our target. Yes. We must eliminate the Alliance before moving on to fight the Kingdom and the Church. However, that doesn't necessarily mean we must occupy the entirety of the Alliance. House Regan stands against the Empire. Therefore, our target is Deirdre, the aquatic capital. We must cross the Aramid River, which separates the Empire and the Alliance. To do that, we must take the largest bridge across it. The Great Bridge of Murden. Murden connects the monastery and the Imperial capital to the east. It is the shortest route there. An Alliance stronghold has been built at the Great Bridge. We'll take that and then head north. At the same time, we must defeat the one who defends it, Judith von Daphne. If we can also take control of Daphne territory, it would be greatly beneficial to us. Prepare yourselves. The next battle will be a momentous one. Join me, my friends, as we begin our journey to bring peace and solace to this war-ravaged world. Standing tall, I see. Edelgard, hello. What do you think of this horse? An equine marvel, no? Look how intelligent he is. You can see it in his face. Certainly much smarter than your horse. Oh, what a lovely bloom. Behold, Edelgard. Do you see this blood-red bloom? This is much more impressive than the pale little sprigs you have there. And, as I'm sure you know, redness symbolizes courage and strength. Ferdinand, stop. I can't believe you're wasting my time with a petty one-sided rivalry. What are you complaining about? You told me not to publish my pamphlet, and I complied. I've had enough of your foolish antics. Very well. I will grant you the duel you so desperately desire. But, when I win, you must forfeit the right to bother me with your ridiculousness. Forever! Do we have a deal? Ah, so you'll fight me after all? Wonderful! To battle, then! All right, Edelgard. Have at me! As you wish. Ha! It only took you one blow? How? I can't afford to hold back against an opponent like you. I led with my fastest, strongest strike. Fastest and strongest? <laughs> You're just flattering me. I have been defeated. Utterly. I cannot believe I was foolish enough to challenge such a plainly superior opponent. The difference in our skill level is not so great as all that. If you had taken the first strike, you might have won. That's why I didn't give you the chance. I do not think talent is what separates us so much as readiness. I had not the faintest idea of what to expect from a real duel. I was playing, but you were not. That such an ill-prepared noble would think to challenge you? It is laughable. Ferdinand... I have been watching you in secrecy, Edelgard. But you and Hubert were noticing me, correct? Well, if you intend to shadow us like that, you can be sure it won't escape our notice. Hubert was primed and ready to... remove you. I ordered him to stand down. You have my thanks. 
I have been making a decision that I am wanting to learn from you. I was thinking it was enough to be shooting one bird with one arrow. But after speaking with you, I trained with hardness. Now I can be shooting two birds with one arrow. Two pheasants? Are you implying that... Yes, a single arrow. That's astounding, Petra. Hmm. It's perhaps a bit late to explain now, but what I was getting at earlier was actually... <laughs> I am having a joke. You... come again? I really was shooting these birds with one arrow, but my joke is that I did have understanding about what you told me. I took it to my heart. Did you now? You are a person with great bluntness. I am admiring of you. As an emperor, a commander, a warrior, and a friend, you are excelling at all that you do. All of the Empire is resting on... on your shoulders, and that is including Brigid, too. I will not be falling behind you. I will be carrying Brigid on my shoulders, too. And one day, you and I will be facing each other, and we will be shaking hands. <sighs> yes, that much is certain. I can see that you no longer need me to look out for you. You and I are much the same. We dutifully shoulder our burdens and stand tall no matter what. It would be foolish of me to deny it. Your words give me great joy. And it also gave me joy to see you being flustered when I was showing you the birds. A cheap trick to be sure, but inarguably funny. To think that you went to all the trouble of shooting two pheasants at once for the sake of a joke. <laughs> well played, Petra. We both are growing every day. I hope we will keep doing so. Show them this letter. Threaten them. Do what you must. Now go. Yes, sir. Hubert, that letter... Is that what I think it was? I suppose there's no denying it. But Edelgard... Explicitly forbade me to send it. Yes, I know. I cannot believe it! You disobeyed a direct order? I thought you were her loyal aide. Unwaveringly. All that I do, I do for her. I seem to recall you expressing a similar sentiment. It is our role to guide her when she is on the wrong course of action. Is that not what you said? You are not supposed to do it in secret. When you disagree with your leader, you must voice your concerns directly. Otherwise, what is the point? The point is the same. Lady Edelgard's best interests are served whether she knows it or not. She needs not trouble herself with the mundane details of my actions. Only results matter. You are sorely misguided. When I believe that Edelgard is making a mistake, I tell her as much. Through discussing the matter, I sometimes find that I was mistaken. To skip that process, to make a decision that is not yours to make. Perhaps your advice is simply useless then. Excuse me? Listen to yourself. If I do as Lady Edelgard requires, then you tell me to be more independent. But if I tread my own path, I am misguided. I suppose the fault is mine for expecting any useful advice to come out of your mouth. <laughs> Ugh, I have had enough of your grousing. To think, I started to believe you were a useful aide. Hubert, my boy. It's rather rare for the two of us to see one another with no one else around, isn't it? Yes, I believe it is. I was good friends with your father, you know. Perhaps this is fate, eh? Of course, when I left the Empire, I broke off my friendship with him. And, well, everyone else. You were right to sever ties with such a miserable piece of filth. Sharp words, Hubert. Contemptible though your father may be, he is still your father. Don't overcomplicate it. I will not forgive him. Ever. Contemptible is just the right word for the wretch. Do you truly know what kind of man my father was? I assume you're talking about the insurrection of the Seven. 
At the time, I was already at Garrick Monk. I know nothing more than hearsay. That said, I found it hard to believe that Lord Bestra would challenge the Emperor like that. Yet that's exactly what he did. Since the dawn of the Adrestian Empire, House Vestra has served House Resvelg as the Emperor's right hand. My father spat on a legacy of loyalty and devotion that had lasted 1100 years. He conspired with the ministers to usurp power from the Emperor and Lady Edelgard. In your father's defense, the Emperor was attempting to take power from the Seven Houses. The Emperor's reform was an attempt to concentrate power in the hands of the throne. The nobles put a stop to that. Emperor Ionius lost the ensuing power struggle. Now it is the nobles' turn to suffer defeat. Her Majesty will crush all who oppose her. You hope she can cease this never-ending conflict? That's quite a goal, Hubert. Ah, young Edelgard. This is your first time in this room, yes? That's right. When I was a student, I avoided this place. I couldn't allow the church to learn of my crests, after all. True enough. But now you have come here by your own choice. Can I take that as an indication that you have come to trust me a little more? I suppose so, though I'm still bothered by certain things. Tell me. What things might those be? Well, we're fighting to free the world from the Church's control and to unify Fodlin. You must have some idea of what the world I'm seeking to create will be like. With the world freed from the powers of Crests, Fodlin's system of nobility will collapse. Precisely. Our current system is founded on the fact that Crests are inherited through blood. If we shatter the status quo so that those without crests are no longer at the mercy of those with them, the very concept of nobility will vanish. Why should that have any effect on me? I am no longer a member of the nobility. Perhaps the fate of the nobility is of no consequence to you. But what about that of crests? You've devoted your life to unraveling their secrets. Whereas I seek to create a world where crests are no longer valued, in fact, I would prefer to rid the world of them entirely, if at all possible. Does this not concern you? I see. Uh, I think I finally understand why you've always seemed so unsure about me. You imagine your ambition might crush my dreams. I assure you, there is nothing to worry about. I support your plans and your ideals wholeheartedly. But at the same time, I also believe that the influence of Crests will not be so easily quelled. That is why I must continue to research them and unravel all the secrets they hold. I see. Edelgard, do you have a minute? You want to speak with me? How unusual. Please, come in. I'll prepare some tea for us. Have a seat. Would you care for some cake? Yes, please. I never say no to sweets. They're from Enbar. A bit too sweet for my own liking. Isn't that the whole point of cake? Well, more for me. Mm, these are fantastic with this tea. <laughs> True. Well, there's no shortage of them. Help yourself to as many as you like. Now then. You wish to speak with me? Mm, mm. So, I, uh, can tell you know a fair bit about me. Mm, mm. <laughs> Maybe this can wait until you've finished eating? Mm. Edelgard, you know a fair bit about me, don't you? What in particular? For example, the fact that I have two crests. Oh? That's... hard to believe? No need to play coy with me. It won't work. It's clear my body has succumbed to the intense pressure of bearing two crests. Due to the immense requirements of bearing these crests, my life expectancy is... painfully short. You know all of this, right? Actually, this is the first I'm hearing of it. 
How would I know unless you told me? Still won't drop the act, huh? Despite how obvious you've been with your concern about my health, you're certainly consistent. I'm not really in the mood for these games. Given your rank, you certainly have access to all kinds of information that others do not. Clearly, you'd have heard all about me. Either way, I know now since you just told me. About your two crests, your physical weakness, and your short life expectancy. However, according to the principles of crest research, it's impossible to bear two crests. Unless... You've undergone a blood reconstruction surgery. Is that the case, Lysithia? Correct. It wasn't as though I had a say in any of this. I see. So you've lived through that relentless terror and agony, and survived. You speak of all of this as though you understand it on a personal level. Edelgard, have you? You're a good friend, Lysithia, and a valuable member of this army. So I won't have you overexerting yourself. I don't want to lose you. Understand? I understand. <laughs> Good girl. Oh, and if you like those cakes, why not take some with you for later? There's no need to pander to me. But, yes, I'll take those. Thanks. Professor Monuela, may I come in? Uh, this room, what... what happened here? Oh, nothing out of the ordinary. Why? Is something the matter? No, I just... Uh, can I help you tidy up? Uh, actually, I have to know. How did you make such a mess in the first place? Please don't ask for the details. Suffice to say, my room always looks like this after I've been dumped. Oh, right. Well, let's see what we can do about it. Your help was unexpected, but appreciated, Edelgard. Now, what can I do for you? I heard that you haven't been acting like yourself, so I came to see if you're doing all right. But the moment I saw you, I could tell you were troubled, so it seemed pointless to ask. I suppose it was rather obvious, wasn't it? Perhaps I should stop being quite so dramatic. All the same, dear, I'd like to repay you for helping me out. Name your prize. I don't need a reward. But, if you wouldn't mind answering my question, I'd greatly appreciate it. Of course! What is it? I once asked you why you chose to retire. You said that the Goddess supports you emotionally, but it's up to you to take care of the rest. I have to admit that I don't quite understand what you meant by that. Can you please explain? Did I say that? <laughs> I suppose so. From joining the Middle Frank Opera Company to becoming a diva of the grand stage. I went through so much to achieve what I did. <sighs> Looking back, I don't know how I made it. What happened during that time? A lot. My divinely gifted voice only got me to the edge of the stage. From there, I had to work hard to defeat my rivals. I did all of this by myself, through sheer force of will. All so I could stand center stage. Ah, I see I was wrong about something. I thought that being a devout believer implied a certain weakness of spirit, an inability to survive on your own. But you've proven me wrong, Professor Manuela. What is it, Hubert? Nothing in particular. I was just recalling your impressive skill with the bow. I'm willing to bet you could put an arrow through the neck of an enemy general from quite a distance. In fact, to any leader's bodyguard, I would go so far as to say you pose the most dangerous kind of threat. Don't worry your fragile little self. Your lady princess is safe. I wouldn't shoot my employer. I would certainly hope not. But there are some mercenaries to whom a contract means little. And you would do well to remember that Lady Edelgard is no mere princess. You should take care to learn the proper form of address for your employer. I said lady. I already told you, I'm not going to break the princess's contract. What did I just say? Proper address, right. 
next time. My patience has limits, you know. For the moment, you may stand in Lady Edelgard's good graces. But if you become a problem, I will not hesitate to eliminate you. You're unstable, Hubert. Be careful who you threaten. I don't take kindly to those who get in the way of my contracts. Is that a threat? Just some advice. Huh? Caspar? Whatever is he doing here? Oh no. Is he looking for a fight with someone taller than him? The poor boy won't give up. This is it! Today's my day! Caspar's day! Come get some! Yes, Caspar, just like that! Just as we practiced! Yes, dodge! Yes! Perfect! Right there! He's open! Punch him right in the... Yes! Caspar, you did it! <laughs> and that's how it's done! Woo! And then I got him! Bam! Right in the solar plexus! <laughs> oh, I really wish you could've... Hey! Are you even listening? This is when it starts getting real good! I'm listening. I am sad to say, however, that the tale is slightly less thrilling the fourth time through. You should be more excited! We finally won! We? Yeah, I couldn't have done it without your advice. You're a strategic genius, Linhart. Nonsense. Your strength carried the day. I just rambled on. You're the one who did the actual work. What's really amazing is how you wouldn't give up. Whoa, I've never heard you compliment me before. Yeah, I don't think I like it. <laughs> Seriously, though, I couldn't have done it without you. Like you said, I wouldn't give up on fighting, and I'm not gonna give up on this either. I should have expected that, I suppose. That's just the kind of guy you are, after all. I guess this friendship is something that we can never escape from. Ever. Are you saying you want to escape from our friendship? Not at all. Even if I did, our fates would not be so easily untangled. Ha! <laughs> you got that right! No one can break this bond. Even if we argue and butt heads sometimes, we'll never have to fight it out. And that's a promise. Understood. I don't desire to fight anyone anyway. This war is the last time I'll set foot on a battlefield. Well, that makes sense. Let's you and I come out the other side of this war alive and well, okay? That is a promise worth making. Definitely. And let's win this thing while we're at it. There you are, Marianne. I'd like a moment to talk. Oh, Linhart. Um, I was just on my way to pray. Hmm, all right. Afterwards. It's already getting late, though. If you'll excuse me. Hmm. So then, you're done? Linhart, were you here this entire time? I was sleeping. Are you ready to talk now? I suppose. My apologies for keeping you waiting. I wasn't waiting. As I said, I was sleeping. I didn't want to disrupt your prayers. I see. So, what did you want to talk about? The results of my research. Your research? I intended to look into the power of your crest from the first moment I met you. I've been feeling quite happy of late. And I can conclude that it is due to your crest. Are you sure? That's... Or more likely, I feel good because I've recently taken a bit of exercise. Oh. Although, keeping you from finding out I was researching you was plenty of exercise on its own. <laughs> Listen, Marianne, I'll tell you one thing for certain. Your crest is not the source of anyone's bad luck. The research on your crest is lacking, but other crests have been studied quite a bit. I can find no proof that a crest can influence the lives of those who come in contact with its bearer. And frankly, transmitting bad luck via touch sounds like a crazy superstition, don't you agree? That may be true. By the way, eating the vegetables you gave me caused no ill effects. They were as delicious as ever. 
It may be another story if I drank your blood. Ugh, now I'm nauseous. Ugh, you're going to make us both sick. All right, all right, sorry. As I said, it is my scholarly opinion that your crest does not cause bad luck. Thank you for your reassurance. It does make me feel a little better. It's probably just that you and the people around you have had some bad days. It happens. I'm going to watch over you from now on, and if either of us has bad luck, well, I'll look into whether it's just chance or if it's your crest. In fact, I'll dedicate my life to it. Your life? For me? Especially for you, Marianne. <laughs> Don't make me spell it out. My princess is lovely. My princess is fair. She sings like cicadas in midsummer's air. Cicadas? Those noisy little bugs that swarm about, endlessly mingling with one another? Oh, uh, good point. I will revise. My princess is lovely. My princess is fair. She sings like a swallow in midsummer's air. Migrating birds. Never sticking around for long. Always off to find love somewhere else. Oh, no, what, what I meant was... Uh... <sighs> oh, Ferdinand, you're just not yourself today. You don't seem focused. Your poetry lacks poetry. Perhaps a break is in order. I would not dream of stopping now. This is my golden opportunity. Pardon me? We are finally alone. Just the two of us. Why, yes, we are, aren't we? You see, Manuela, I have long admired you. Is that a fact? I saw you perform countless times while you were with the opera company. Oh, <laughs> I see. So what did you think? The figure you cut, that heartbreaking voice. I was mesmerized. That is why I am tongue-tied. I am nervous about speaking to you alone, after idolizing you for so long. There's no need to be nervous, Ferdinand. That songstress you recall is long gone. I get nervous too, you know. But I want you to feel relaxed around me. Understood? Yes, uh, <clears throat> the... Yes, I promise to try. You're really full of surprises, you know that? I assumed you'd be more interested in combat than the arts. Come and chat sometime? I'd love to hear more about how my performances mesmerized you. Hey, Kaspar, care to join me for tea? Again? Well, let's make it quick. I gotta get some training in eventually. More training? Don't you get tired of it? No, I don't get tired of working toward my goals, unlike you. Me? What do you mean? Your quest for the perfect husband. I haven't seen you wasting time with any dull-looking guys lately. Oh, that. Maybe I just found something worth staying in for. You mean in the monastery? This place is a dump compared to what it was five years ago. That's not what I'm talking about. Honestly, Kaspar, you don't understand women at all. Well, excuse me. Maybe I'm just another dull guy. That must be why you don't pick up on how I feel. Uh, what? When I'm around you, I feel like... Well, like I can always be myself. I don't need to act differently or flirt or lie. I can just be me. I always said you were little brother material, but when we're alone like this, the idea of marriage... Nope. Hold it right there. Ah, uh, I'm gonna need a minute. I was not ready for this. Kaspar, settle. You might be getting the wrong idea. I was only saying, when I'm with you like this, I can forget all about marriage and just be friends. Huh? Uh, right. Of course. Though, I suppose relationships like that can also lead to marriage. Now I know you're messing with me. I'm not trying to tease. I was just thinking out loud. If neither of us ever find our special someone, it might not be so bad to settle down and spend the rest of our lives together. What do you think? I... haven't really thought about that. 
I'm not really the romance type. Spending the rest of my life with you doesn't sound so bad, though. But why are we even talking about this? There's no way you won't find someone great. Stranger things have happened. Either way, no point in worrying about it now. I'm plenty happy with our current situation. Let's just focus on staying good friends. Good idea. Here's to us. All right, Yurikins. Isn't it about time you let go of this grudge? <sighs> I'm sorry I dragged you out onto the stage, but I can't believe you're still holding it against me. I bear no grudge. Then why do you get this stony look and face the other way any time you catch a glimpse of me? <sighs> oh, Ladybird. Truth be told, when I see you, it reminds me of my own self-loathing. Of my past. Huh. I didn't know you were carrying something like that. You rose up from your hardships and became the lead singer for a prestigious opera. All on your own. While I made my way through the world by licking the boots of wretched nobles. Watching you on stage from the sidelines. It wasn't until recently that I felt a real sense of accomplishment in my life. But recalling that first pivotal moment when I saw you on stage, you were brilliant. You shone like nothing I'd ever seen. Whenever I see you, Lady Bird, I'm reminded of that moment. And in that moment, I had never felt so filthy and unlovable in all my life. That's why you don't like singing? There's got to be more to it than that. Back then, the Imperial capital was swarming with disgusting nobles. All of them vying for your attention. For the love of the Dorothea. Many were willing to compromise with an inferior substitute. If they couldn't have you, perhaps someone else was capable of singing just as sweetly. You do what you must to chase your dreams. You say it left you filthy and unlovable, but my life didn't leave me unscathed either. There's not much love left in what I do. There was once, of course. As a child, I lived for singing. No matter how hard times got, I always had that. I counted myself so lucky to have met Manuela and joined the opera. But the more I sang for a living, the less certain I was that I loved it anymore. You're a tricky one to assess. I can't tell if you're too wise or too naive for your own good. Whether or not your heart's in it now, you certainly didn't appear to hate it back then. I'd never seen you beam so brightly as you did when you helped me train for the performance. <sighs> you might be onto something. I felt genuinely happy in that moment. You just lost your spark for singing. Nothing more. It's how I feel about it in a way. How about this? Why not join an opera that doesn't have dealings with nobles? That's a great idea, actually. We'll start something new together, you and me. I don't know about all that now. The world is full of people who fell through the cracks just like us. We'll take them in whenever we can and aim to become Fodlin's premier opera company. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I was this fired up. Though we'll have to table it until after the war. Hmm. Our own one-of-a-kind traveling opera. You know, that does sound fairly thrilling. I have no doubts it could help deepen our pockets. <laughs> Leave it to you to take all the romance out of it. But I know you're an idealist deep down. Takes one to know one. I must say, I do enjoy seeing your mischievous side at work. I'll take that as a compliment. I could say the same for you, too. It's exactly why I'm comfortable sharing this dream with you. Of course I passed. The Secret Merchant. 
Anna was approached by Pallardo, a merchant who frequents Garrick Mark with a get-rich-quick scheme. It appears this plan has more than a few layers. <laughs> the only reason I'm going to do this paralogue is because it's also Yaritza's paralogue. Other than that, it's time to grind. What to do? What to do? Not really sure I should be trusting him. But if I can make a decent profit... What about profits? Hi, Professor. Overheard me mumbling about profits? See, I got a lead on a pretty big job, but I've got some concerns. A job? Yep. Apparently, there's some priceless treasure that's been unearthed. If you can believe it, it predates the Adrestian Empire. I've been asked to secure troops for the job, but I've got to cover the cost for them. The upside is whatever we find, we get halvesies on. But there's a downside, too. The potential to find nothing. Bingo. If we find nothing, I'll be eating those upfront costs. But just imagine the gold if we do find something. It's a risk I'm willing to take. This job is coming from a merchant named Pilardo. Ever heard of him? He frequents the monastery, so he must be somewhat trustworthy. Right? You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. You in? I accept your challenge. Jeez, it's not a challenge. I just need your help with excavation. Your job's gonna be to find someone who can help out. And then I'll need you on board at the excavation site. Naturally, the more treasure we dig up, the more money you get. Sound good? I'll find the treasure. Your services are appreciated as always. Let's head out. <laughs> Come on, we'll be rolling in gold. Wait. Uh, you, starting a conversation? I'm confused. I'll go. Are you into treasure hunting? Not particularly. But I smell blood. Anna, I sense death about you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's with the gloomy death talk? You're scaring me. I, uh, well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt for you to join in then. Shall we? We really hit the jackpot! Just look at all those shinies! Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. We'll be filthy rich. <laughs> As you say, Miss Anna, thanks to you, we've achieved our goals. Uh, hey, Pilardo. What's with the cavalry? Ah, they're here to transport the treasures. It's quite a load, after all. You trying to pull something? We agreed on a 50-50 split. Yes, you have it right. Stop fretting about it. You'll be receiving your cut just as soon as I determine the exact value. Nuh-uh. No way, no how. I can't agree to that. As a merchant yourself, you know I can't. No way am I watching my share of the treasure gallop off into the sunset. We're splitting this up right here and now. I'm not agreeing to it any other way. Whether or not you agree, I'll be on my way now. Come on then, men. Let's go. Come back here! And now it's a hunt rather than a battle. How very boring. The wagon will be here any minute now. Everyone, guard the treasure until it arrives. Do you really think you're getting away with all that loot? Ha! You may not be aware, but I know a thing or three about magic. Ah, start by magicking away this load of treasure here. He knows how to warp things away? You gotta be kidding me. We gotta put a stop to Pilardo right now. Otherwise, the treasure will be out of our hands for good. The basic goal of this map is to kill everyone as quickly as possible so that you can literally keep every single item My that's turn. on offer here. I'll 
dirty my hands if I must. Sally Ford! Ready for anything. For the Empire! I'll strike you down! Ha! 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 The only possible outcome. I'll cut a bloody path. Did you think I'd let you go? A laugh. Strength is all for... Understood. What's my strategy? Put me in there. Aye, aye. Why not? I do this for all of us. This is the cost of war. Understood. What's my strategy? Ready for anything. I will not back down one step! A boon for our future. Thing or two. Put me in there. For all of us. I'll cut a bloody path. Why not? Oh! 
This is the cost of war. For Her Majesty! those mercenaries. We made it! Finally! Oi, Pilardo! Leave them to us! Glad I hired those mercenaries. Now I can worry about myself and get out of here. Oh. I figured there would be more of them. Well, I'm sure more will show up soon. Won't be in vain. Could turn the tides. Here is something to believe in. It won't be in vain. All is for victory! 
No time for pity. I'm continuing to improve. Your spirit is admirable. For the fate of Foden. Once I kill you, I'll be able to go about my business without anyone around to damage my reputation. Watch and learn! Allow me to demonstrate! I must lead them well. Here is something to believe in! There's no turning back now. Spell working. I better get out of here and check on the wagon. Everyone, protect the treasure. The wagon will be here soon. Whew. Well, at least the treasure's safe for now. That said, if that wagon gets back here, it's over. Better hurry and take back the rest of the spoils. Much Another peerless victory! I do not tolerate obstacles! Shut 
I must lead them well. All of us. My turn. Unexpected for her majesty. Why not? I Sally forth. Tis no shame in falling before me. For anything. For the empire. Let's keep up the pace. What's my strategy? There's no turning back now. I think I got it. Right. Hardly worth the effort. A laughable... Strength is all for a mercenary.
I will see this war through. No time for accolades. It all comes down to this. I think. Well done. Thanks so much. Consequential. I knew you could do it. to count on. much? As if there is such a thing. Well, what goes around, comes around.
That was time spent in vain. No, it wasn't. Thank you, everyone, for all the help. And just look at how much we got back. It should cover all our costs and then some. You'll be rewarded handsomely. Thank you. Though if that when I was 16, 30. Merchant, maybe I shouldn't call myself one. We'd better let Hubert know all about this so we can give him what for. There's no need. I'll take care of him. Yuritsa, wait! And he's off. Well, I almost feel bad for Pilardo. No, wait. He tried to rip me off. I don't feel bad at all. <laughs> now we got some huge grinding to get done and some supports to unlock for Byleth and Yuritsa. Otherwise, how else am I going to put a ring on my bands? Good lord. I'll cut a bloody Because Hubert's got a lot to catch up on now. But fortunately, we have two knowledge gems. So this shouldn't take too long for Hubert to become the ultimate magic user person thingy. Magical boy. <laughs> Not my... Death grows more distant. Watch and learn! Not my... I could go another few rounds. Kill or not to kill is my choice alone. I'm impressed. Oh! 
I'm stronger than before. Not my goal, but a means to an end. I desire greater strength. A fine display. This should prove useful. What's my strategy? I'll cut a bloody path. I'll use them. A lot. Well done. Death. Kill or not to kill? Thank you. Well done. Fine display. Ugh, I'm so sick of it all. There is so much to be done, yet all I encounter are new problems and pitfalls. Ugh, sometimes I wish I could spend just one day doing absolutely nothing and gorging myself on sweets. Let's do just that. Do you mean it? Just the thought makes me happy, but Hubert would never allow it. 
That's too bad. Indeed. It may not be possible now, but one day we will know the joys of idling. Mark my words. Is that a smirk I spy? Is it so amusing to you, me daydreaming of free time? You misunderstand me. <laughs> Your silly grin says otherwise. But let's put all that aside for now. There is something I've been meaning to tell you. I'm afraid this might sound a bit... sentimental. However... I want to thank you. Because of you, I feel I can walk my faded path without losing myself. If I were alone, I might have lost perspective and become a harsh leader with a heart of ice. But I'm not alone. With you by my side, I'm somehow free to be not only a leader, but simply Edelgard. I'm glad. Until now, no one has been able to surpass me, much less command me. I have always been seen as an untouchable princess or emperor. No one spoke to me as an equal or met my gaze without flinching. It was lonely, terribly lonely. The only person I could rely on as I tried to claw my way out of the darkness was myself. But you, you have been a brilliant light. Somehow you have chased the darkness away. And for that, I will always be grateful. Do you have a moment, Professor? I need to speak. That's the last of them. Another threat to her majesty? Who's there? It's me. You owe me for that one. Shamir, what are you doing here? Same thing you are, but I'm after a particular target. The dark side of the Knights of Saros is proving troublesome. I should have known, having been one. I was... negligent. I had thought we'd sufficiently thin the numbers of these scum. Seems I was mistaken. In any case, you have my thanks. Save it. Just doing my job. Even so? Killing your former allies? Do you feel no remorse whatsoever? You wouldn't, so I ask. You are not me. Answer the question. What's it matter? I owed a debt to Rhea. I served in the Knights of Saros to repay her. I repaid that debt. Now I'm here. I'm sure it was considered dishonorable of me to leave, but that's none of my concern. I have no connection to the Saros faith, nor to the ways of Fodlan. <laughs> that's right. You're from Dagda. Well, consider me glad you're on the right side. At least for the time being. You worry too much. Watch out, or it'll be the death of you. The newly crowned king of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, Dimitri, has declared fealty to the Church of Saros and is raising an army in preparation for all-out war with the Empire. As leader of the Alliance, Claude maintains a facade of neutrality amidst infighting between those who support and those who oppose the Empire. Meanwhile, the Black Eagle Strike Force plans to capture Alliance territory before Edelgard takes the war to the Kingdom and the Church of Saros. With sights set on capturing Deirdre at the center of House Regan's territory, she leads a march across the Great Bridge of Murden to establish a bridgehead. We're about to commence our attack on the Great Bridge of Murden. But first, allow me a moment of your time. What do you need? It is something that I can only ask of you. Listen well. It concerns Lady Edelgard's uncle, the regent of the Empire, Lord Arundel. Although he is currently cooperating with Her Majesty, 
He maintains his own sizable military troops. It seems to me that his plans differ from our own. I assume you recall a certain group scheming from five years ago? Solon and Kranya. They both served Lord Arendelle. He must be dealt with. Professor, I understand how you must be feeling, considering what they did to your father. I know it must be foul to even consider cooperating with their kind. However, their power is essential for us at present. Edelgard also strongly opposed the idea at first. Our enemy is the Church of Seros itself. It cannot be toppled with the Empire's might alone. Those working under Lord Arendelle are extremely hostile toward the Church. And the enemy of our enemy is... Well, I think you sufficiently understand by now. Are you sure that's a good idea? Until all of Fodlan is united, it is a necessary evil. As for how we deal with him afterward, time will tell. Regardless, Her Majesty and I wish to join our power with yours. You should know that in her heart, Her Majesty regards that group as enemies of herself and her family. They used her father, the former Emperor, as a puppet, and murdered her siblings with their vile experimentation. I believe Her Majesty may have told you some of this herself. That is why this was a very painful decision for her to make. I will do all I can to ensure her suffering is not in vain. And I hope I can count on you to do the same. As for all I have told you, please keep it in mind as we march forward. More importantly, I implore you to fight as best you can for Edelgard. From the bottom of my heart, I beg this of you. We'll be capturing the Great Bridge of Murden, a key strategic location of the Leicester Alliance. Claude will surely be sending reinforcements, so we must prevail before they arrive. Our opponent is Judith, the so-called hero of Daphnel. We can handle her, so long as we don't get careless. The boy said to run if I was in danger, but... I could never do that. I'll hold out until reinforcements arrive. And then the funny thing is, is, we did not recruit Raphael, I'm so I'm wondering where the hell he is. Judith's here. Ignat's He's here. here. We stole Lawrence so that we could get Thursus. Very helpful. Leone I shows up in this chapter. Path. Hilda and Claude and Lysithia would appear next chapter. Marianne would not make an appearance post time skip because of the fact that it's implied that she kills herself. Ready for anything. You know, as seen in the A support with her. That's why we stole her, because I needed a dancer and I also believe in Marianne's supremacy. So the only person left then is Raphael. But he never shows up. So in this timeline, we let Raphael win. What's my strategy? It's a shame about Ignaz, though. Oh yeah. Thank you. Let's clean up. There's no stopping me. I will prevail. Put me in there. Ignorance is deadly. All is for victory. I will see this war through. I'll take all the strength I can get. Huh? Uh. 
That's life. Her will demands it. It won't be in vain. Someone's fired up. I will not back down one step. A boon for our future. Keep it up. I owe you now. their numbers. You're fresh out of luck. Just like that. This could turn the tides. Stay down. We can't place the future of Fodlin in Edelgard's hands. If you're allied with the Empire, I have no choice but to fight you. Uh-huh. A weak point. I'll 
dirty my hands if I must. Judith! I'm so glad you're safe. Claude sent me here with reinforcements. Do I have to put up with orders from that false leader? Because you're from the smallest noble house in all the Alliance, you whiner. Enemy reinforcements. We didn't finish in time. Don't let them secure the ballista. Helping Claw build the future of Fodlin. I should have known this would happen. Ignatz, damn it! Such a good kid. He died too young. Done for. Claude, I'm sorry. Judith! No! Alliance soldiers, Judith has fallen. Further conflict is futile. If you surrender, your lives will be spared. Lay down your weapons immediately. You have all fought well. With this victory, we now have a foothold in the Alliance. The Imperial Army will cross the Aramid River and push the front lines forward. The fight will continue, but do not allow that to stop you from taking pride in our hard-won victory. Ah, this should put a stop to one of Edelgard's choice phrases. Well done, Professor. I believe it was, if only the Professor were here, we could forge ahead and change the tides of this war. Ferdinand, it is not necessary to tell the Professor such things. <laughs> We're not the only ones benefiting. The whole Imperial Army is stronger now. Yes, it seems the Empire finally has both of its legs to stand on. Don't you agree? <sighs> you make it sound as though I can't run the Empire on my own. Perhaps it's more apt to say that the Pegasus has recovered its horn. Judith of Daphne. <sighs> what a magnificent warrior. I'm happy to have the Professor back just like old times, but I don't think I'll ever get used to this cruel exchange of lives. When there is something you must not be conceding, you must keep fighting. The fighting has been continuing for five years, but now I am again witnessing the Professor's power. I hate fighting, but with the Professor here, maybe it's slightly less terrible? Oh, but everyone is working so hard! Stop it, Bernie. You can't be the only one complaining. I'm glad to see everyone so inspired. It seems the reappearance of the Professor has done much to raise your morale. Do you not feel the same, Hubert? Come now, be honest with yourself. Now, we must take advantage of the situation and blaze ahead. Our path is still a long one. And that's going to do it for this part of Fire 
Emblem Three Houses. So, I'll catch you next week for next part. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye.